All right, and welcome back to the Royal Vision Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Alex Taylor, and today we have a very special guest hailing from our women's tennis team. She's a senior. She's from Plainfield, New Jersey, attended Union Catholic High School. Uh, she's been This is her third season on the women's tennis team, and she will be playing with the team in Orlando, Florida later this year during our spring break, and her name is Maddie Abud. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh Great day today. Yes, I mean, the weather's beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. I hope it sticks up, but uh, you know the you know the area we live in. Yep. So unpredictable. Ish. It, yeah, it's probably not going to keep up, but we can definitely definitely cross our fingers. So, I just need to hear all about you starting with tennis. Absolutely. Um, so actually, I am one of four siblings, and my dad decided he just wanted us to be exposed to all sports since we were young. And in about second, first or second grade, he began to take my three siblings and myself out on the court, which is pretty great for doubles. (laughs) Um, So since I was little, just started playing recreationally. And then going into high school, I decided I wanted to kind of incorporate some more competitive play and tried out for my high school team and made varsity my freshman year. So played varsity for four years and... uh, I was it was also a blessing. I was able to play with my sister, so that was really fun. We played Absolutely. doubles for a year. Um, we were co-captains for a year, and uh, just had a great time playing both singles and doubles in high school. Every one of you played tennis then. Yeah, we wow. all played uh, tennis. Uh, all four of us played in high school, and then uh, all played some other sports too. But tennis has always kind of stuck with me. Well, that's fantastic. I, I kind of got really uh, competitive really fast. Oh, you guys are gonna go there. You nailed it. Absolutely. Wow. Um, definitely for sure. Round robins are never a dull moment with us. <laughs> no, I love it, and that sounds absolutely fantastic. So, are y- are you um one of the only ones that attended the University of Scranton? No, actually. Um, so I'm a triplet. So. My brother, uh, he attends Scranton with me. And then my sister, Sadie, she's my other triplet. She's at Catholic University running track. And then I have a younger brother, one year younger, Benjamin, and he's at Catholic University as well. So transitioning from, you know, you obviously had a very good love of it in high school. Transitioning Mm -hmm. from high school into college. Just tell, tell me about that transition. Yeah, absolutely. So after graduating from high school, I... Initially, I was pretty sure that I did not want to continue playing uh, competitively, so um, I decided to not try out for the team or commit to Scranton for tennis. Uh, Went throughout freshman year, just kind of really, really feeling um, that I missed it. And while I was able to play recreationally, there's it was missing that team aspect. And uh, at the end of my freshman year. It was um, it was just that summer, and I was talking to my siblings, and I was, they were like, you should just try out. Why not? And there was not an intramural tennis at the time, so I decided, okay, let's go for it. And uh, then I tried out that August, and I made it, and it's been an incredible – it's the best, one of the best decisions, I'd say, I've made at Scranton in my four years here. You just highlighted it in the beginning as well. How important is the team aspect to your overall career playing in tennis? Oh, it's absolutely – critical to I'd say your development in so many facets um socially it's incredible because you're surrounded by like-minded people who truly want to um you know establish a clear goal go for that goal in a very like meaningful way and in harmony with other people so it's you all have this shared goal in mind and you all kind of get to give each other your tidbits of advice, knowledge, um, and companionship as you go about, you know, achieving that goal. What would you say is your favorite? Because you said you play both uh, singles and doubles, but Mm. do you you primarily play singles here at the university? Yes, um, I've stuck with singles at the university here. Um, I just feel that's where my strengths lay, while doubles is an incredible game to play. I just feel that I was able to better focus my talents on singles instead of trying to spread myself too thin doing both here. Absolutely. And I I mean, would you ever get that same chemistry that you had with your uh, own sibling? Like, that's insane. No, you Uh, definitely would not. The the pure, like, honesty in, and still in a, you know, very kind way, but the 
clear like we just understood each other in a way that you know it's kind of you can't really mimic that in any other like form if you were with another doubles partner so um to kind of share that with her was very special absolutely i highlighted it in the beginning of the intro um you guys are going down to florida right specifically Mm -hmm. orlando for spring break How, how exciting are these matches coming up Oh, they are, they're absolutely exhilarating Um, just because they offer such a challenge for us. um, It's a lot of very competitive teams. Um, Each match is, it's never a, you know, clear, you know, um, straight through win for either team. So it offers the chance for us to really focus on communication cheering each other on from the sidelines and being really aware of what's going on on other courts and not just yourself, Um, especially when it's getting close and it's tied and the energy is high. Um, So it's just, it's a great way for us to really practice the scenarios that will come our way in our real season, but it's just a great chance for us to kind of also analyze what we need to work on as the, the season begins. So this is only just like a little taste going into your, your full regular season then? Exactly. Um, actually, this year, one of the matches will actually be um, for our season. Uh, so we'll be playing Susquehanna down in Orlando. So that will count for our matches this year. Wow, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And do any one of these teams actually, is it maybe more of like a tournament style? Do they overall win? Or is it just mm. kind of segmented matches? Exactly. It's segmented matches. So... Um, we usually it's uh the coaches are pretty intentional about who they reach out to and what matches they schedule and for when so um for example last year we had a absolutely nail-biting match against hamline and they're a division two team um and we decided like our coaches planned okay we want to play them again because we knew that it would bring that same challenge to us most likely this year so that kind of style for segmented matches i picked up even an interesting quality there um you're able to transcend divisions in these matches yes how does Mm -hmm. that feel it's amazing it's actually great um because like i said first of all like offers a great challenge for us um and then also like to also then kind of have that confidence when we do have matches where we have beat a division two team um to have that confidence going into our season is something that is, um, you know, a great way to kick off and kind of have that uh, team sense of accountability and able the idea that we can uh, achieve our goals. Yeah, going right off of that, I mean, the women's tennis team is nothing short of amazing. We've qualified for the conference playoffs in each of the past 20 seasons, even getting into our semifinals last season. uh, Unfortunately, lost to Drew. Um, You were part of the team, right, Mm -hmm. at this time. What did that loss mean to you, maybe in the long run, and how is it going to carry you into this next season? Mm, great question. Uh, that loss, we knew going into that match that it was going to be a great challenge for both teams. Um, and what it taught us is that, one, we, we did go down with a fight. We really did. We um, all brought different strategies that we worked on in practices prior to our match against Drew because we were able to really analyze the players and play uh, a much more intentional match. So I think going into that s- this season, that kind of brought with us the idea that strategy is critical to our play and uh, kind of carry that in with us into this season. We have a very uh, interesting perspective now because you're a senior. This is going to be your mm-hmm. last season, right? Uh, I'm sure you've learned some things you know, going through the whole course of your career, what would you say is some of the best piece of advice that you can give to someone maybe just starting out? Ooh, great. Another great question. (laughs) Uh, To somebody just starting out, I would say the key is to truly, and it's interesting because at the Royal Way uh, meeting we had a few weeks ago, there was a pattern with every senior that was speaking that I noticed, and everybody was saying, yes, it's incredible and it's also important to have these goals that you aspire to as a team and you do need those however what's just as important if not more is the way you go about achieving those goals and 
I would say especially attending a Jesuit institution, but also just anybody try, trying a sport anywhere, just the idea of cherishing the journey and just giving it your best each step of the way. You know, the rest will take care of itself. So just uh, embrace each step, do your best with your God-given gifts, and um, the rest will play out the best that the way it should, you know. Definitely a fabulous answer. You, and you brought up the royal way. You know, being a royal is a crucial part of being an athlete here. And maybe what does is, what is having the school on your back mean to you? I would say going to Scranton offers a really important skill that you can integrate into your play, whatever your sport is. And it's the idea of just instilling those Jesuit ideals. So I'll just take one for example. Um, the idea of cure personalis, care for the entire person. This school clearly has, its, has your back because they're saying, look, you have to care for your mind, your body, your soul, and you're responsible for doing that for yourself and your teammates. So that's what the sports program really offers you is this opportunity to not only enhance yourself, which anybody's academic career can do at a university, but it also offers you that chance to really do that for others too and uh, kind of, you know, extend that to others. Great answer. And I couldn't even think of any. I mean, well said. Thank like, you. I don't know if I can come up with a better answer, oh, honestly. Thanks. Appreciate it. Right into that, being an athlete is obviously a huge part of your college career. Obviously, you said you missed it, so you went back to it and never looked back from there. How do you think juggling your schedule as a student works with ju juggling your schedule as maybe an athlete? Like, maybe a little bit of insight on that. How do you do it? I would say that compared to my freshman year where there was there was still a schedule and structure, I think it once again, just like if you've had a busy schedule before in your life, uh, having that sense of accountability is very important. And on the college level, uh, I've been able to, what I would say the best strategy I would have is truly like just like intentionally planning the week, being like, okay, so this is my tennis, this is the strategy I'm going to be working on at practice. What would I like to come out of practices this week? And then same with my academics. Okay, these are my classes this week. These are the times. Um, you know, I work at uh, Einstein's, the coffee place. I substitute. Just plan that all out. What are your goals for each of those? Then, once again, goals are important. And then how you go about it is just as important. So you go into your each week, one day at a time, with your goals, your end result clearly s kind of stated in my mind, and then the rest just do my best with each task one by one, and that's it, yeah. What would you say is your biggest goal for this upcoming season? That's a good question. My biggest goal for this season is to truly continue, because each of us have been so good at this, and it's only been improving, is truly being a team player. Tennis, while it is a largely, you know, individual or you maybe you're playing with one other person in doubles, um, you know, a more individual sport, it's we're learning more and more just how critical that team sense on the court while we're playing a match is. So to enhance that, um, just be very aware of what's going on on other courts and, uh, you know, attending to those each match as needed while also playing my match and um, you know being aware of what's going on in mine. So kind of finding that balance but remembering that it's all for our one team. Definitely having a strong foundation from the inside helps the team as a whole. We were talking a little bit about the outside. Now maybe an audience. Um, obviously tennis etiquette for an audience is a little bit different from say maybe a football match or maybe even a basketball match for that matter. But how important do you think is still having an audience of your community coming out to support you is to your overall success? It is. I could not express how much it changes the um, trajectory of your match. Um, those matches where the energy from the people, the you know onlookers, um, is positive and um, just very like they're all very present. It completely changes the feeling from the court. So with that said, I could think of a few examples uh, from even just from our Florida matches last year uh, during spring break. There were, like I said, they were 
very tight matches and to just have the support from your teammates and when there's when there's onlookers and that support it takes that individuality away from you and uh, it kind of reminds you that it is for your team so even just having those it's not even just the feeling of support but the reminder that this isn't just your match this is a whole team effort so it kind of keeps that uh, mentality intact while you play you heard it here from maddie come out to these matches like i don't know that was that answer astounding like now if that doesn't get you out to these matches <laughs> i don't know yes. are, are you a royal like we i don't would know love it because um tennis is probably one of the uh less viewed during our home matches um you know of sports so we would really appreciate it if uh, more people come out this spring we would love it and it would definitely uh, improve, I'd say, just our mindset and our performance. Absolutely. Please definitely, definitely come out. I mean, I'm going to be there. These are going to awesome. be huge, especially for our seniors. Um, going right off of that, mm -hmm. you know, big inspirations, they, um, they really shape someone into who they are, maybe what they aspire in life. Maybe some of your biggest inspirations. That is another <laughs> really all great questions. Uh, I would say greatest inspirations kind of an interesting mix actually so um first i would have to say uh audrey hepburn i think she is such an example of how to remain poised um despite sh especially she uh there's actually a great documentary i really recommend watching it's on netflix called audrey and it really delves into how she despite the many challenges she faced during her lifetime uh, kind of learned how to maintain such a poise and uh, a compassion throughout the entirety of her life. And uh, just that I've always carried with me ever since I watched that documentary um, and kind of just like really read up more on, on her. Just really one of the most inspiring individuals I've really come across. Um, and then I would also have to say in terms of uh, maybe the sports realm, um, a great example, especially when you're younger and you're playing sports, it's really important to have um, an example of somebody who shows composure on the court, whatever sport they're playing. And Roger Federer growing up was a great example of that. Uh, just very gracious. If he won, he was not boastful. Um, and when he lost, he would just remain very composed, uh, kind, and immediately would always congratulate the other player. And that's so important to see when you're young, because think of all the people that you're playing. This reminds us all as players too. We have a responsibility for how we act on the court because who knows who's watching? Maybe there's some children that want to play sports and you're formulating you know, their mindsets. Uh, that maybe even feed into your, your major a little bit, kind of formed a little yep. bit of a question. What sort of values or maybe even attributes do you take into maybe your sports that you kind of bring into your major? Because your major is education, yes. right? So it very is very much involves teaching and nurturing kind of base mm -hmm. like that. But um, particularly for children, uh, for, for your case, right? Yes. Um, so, yeah, what kind of maybe values or um, attributes do you bring into that field, into uh, education? So I would say the main values that would cross over into both, but also just kind of formulate for me as a person is it's really important for as a teacher and as a player to um, have the ability to s stop, pause, and discern. So whether that's in the classroom um, to kind of, you know, treat each child individually, not react. My point is not reacting right away. That's important both on the court and in the classroom. <laughs> um, so just the ability to remain um, very, like, I, I guess I would say uh, open to whatever's going to happen next. So that re requires a certain amount of impartiality is my point. So, um, you know, with students, just objectively, like, discerning what to do next in the classroom, same thing on the court, instead of reacting right away. And then another value is truly compassion. Compassion for the person you're playing, compassion for the children I'm teaching, and uh, remaining very intentional with how you're treating both of them. Because at the end of the day, it's 
a blessing that you're on the court. It's a blessing to be a teacher, you know, and it's so important to keep in mind why you're doing what you're doing. Great answer to have. Great values, too, especially in, in, in both sports and, mm-hmm. and whatever job you want to pursue. Just hearing a little bit more about you, I mean, it seems like you're very busy. I mean, you have <laughs> your major, you're working on campus, you're substituting, and then, I mean, your senior year coming up, you're obviously going to put a little bit more focus into tennis. What are you doing when you're not juggling the world? Um, <laughs> when, I, when I'm winding down, I simply love, I guess I would say I love cooking. Um, I've loved... Um, since I was younger, both my parents kind of started teaching my siblings and I how to just cook basic meals. And then now it's evolved into more, um, like we're Lebanese. So we're trying to do more complex like recipes and, um, just really, uh, focusing on that. And then also, um, just cherishing the time with my family and friends and traveling when I can just exploring the world and everybody that it has so that you can, I really I just love travel because you meet people and they share their stories and you can appreciate and learn from them and that's you know kind of what I just love doing outside of my busyness of my life uh yeah. what would you say is probably your favorite place that you've traveled to so far mm, um I would have to say my favorite place is Morocco just the between the food and the welcome the welcoming uh feeling that you got there was unbeatable the people could not have been more um, kind hospitable and uh that definitely stuck with me definitely gonna keep that in mind for my spring break uh (laughs) because i won't be competing in florida (laughs) um so this is it's got to be my favorite question to ask Mm -hmm. um i love asking every athlete this Um, i just get so many different answers so many just deep in looks to a person and how they perform and how they compete so there's a story that you can tell me that really sticks in your mind, helped shape you as a person for your career and your sport. I would have to say um, growing up, just more than a sto- one specific story, um, something that's just stuck with me throughout the entirety of my life is the idea that we're all lifelong learners. And uh, both of my parents are educators and they've been in the education system. And just growing up, with um, both of them with the main goal of just uh, exposing my siblings and I to as many different ideas about the world and just using that for example uh, it could be a random Saturday and we would wake up and they'd be like okay we're going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art today and we're going to go to this exhibit and uh, learn about the whatever it was you know medieval times and we would just hop in the car and go and just thing, little memories like that, just building the character of my siblings and myself, I would just have to say that is something that's formed who I am because it's just, it's what's prompted me to choose education as my major and uh, just kind of want to spread the idea to others that by learning about the world, by learning about other people and appreciating it, you develop a respect for others in the world and really desire to improve it so um just the idea that we're all lifelong learners definitely something great to carry with you throughout your whole life absolutely love it uh where can we find upcoming matches in this new season you got an instagram uh yes we do we have the lady royals tennis as our instagram all of our matches and match times are posted prior to our matches the schedule is online and also um we will be releasing a on the main athletics page that's being released, the schedule and the times. And most of them are home matches. So we definitely would love, once again, to see your support there. I mean, you heard it right here from Maddie. Um, They love your support. It helps them. It carries them. They remember it. Uh, It's the least, honestly, we can do to support everybody in this community because they're part of the community. And it's fun. It's it's going to be a great time. It's going to be a great season. I mean, you guys seem fired up, and you're ready to win this landmark conference. Definitely. I can't wait to see what you guys do. Uh, Maddie. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Alex. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Great time. So uh, as you heard, Lady Royals Tennis on Instagram. Go find out when you can go see a match. They would really appreciate it. Um, And of course, you know, follow the Royals Athletics. And we'll be posting about that too and all that. So as always, I've been your host, Alex Taylor. This has been the Royal Vision Podcast. We'll see you in the next one.